So in the last two videos, we kind of talked through kind of generally what this idea of conditional distributions is. Then in the second video, we kind of mathematically defined a conditional distribution. And now in this final video for the week, we're gonna talk through some of the things we can do with these conditional distributions. Like I said, at the end of the previous video, oftentimes it's gonna be easier or more useful to work with kind of statistics based on a conditional distribution instead of the, the conditional distribution itself. And so one example is just the mean of a conditional distribution. Uh, sometimes just kind of calculating a conditional distribution. I mean, knowing that conditional distribution can be, can be useful, but uh, oftentimes it might be easier or, or, or just more practical or more useful to just think about what is the mean of that conditional distribution. Especially as we see more and more choices, our, our variance should probably be, be kind of uh, reducing. And, and so we would kind of be, be getting closer and closer to the mean be, being more kind of uh, more likelihood occurring right around the mean. And so maybe it's, it's worth just thinking about the mean directly. And so the mean of a conditional distribution, or to say this in a lot of words, the mean of beta among the group, and this is the group that came from a population with unconditional distribution defined by theta, but this is gonna be the mean of betas among that group who choose sequence Y sub N when faced with choice setting X sub N. And just kind of definitionally, by the definition of a mean of a, of a uh, density, the mean of all of those betas is gonna be equal to the integral of beta integrated over the conditional density H. This is just kind of a, a definitional thing. In the previous video, we uh, kind of constructed a formal mathematical definition or derivation of this H conditional density. And so let's just plug that in. And what we get is this uh, kind of ratio of integrals here. It is the integral of beta times the conditional choice probability times the unconditional distribution divided by the integral of the conditional choice probability times the unconditional distribution. Note the denominator here is just the uh, mixed logit choice probability. The numerator here is very similar to the mixed logit choice probability. We've just kind of slipped this beta inside of the integral as well. So this kind of mathematically is how we could define the mean of one of these conditional distributions. Unfortunately, just like with the mixed logit model, these integrals don't have closed form expressions and so they have to be simulated. So how would we simulate a, let's call it a conditional mean coefficient? Well, it's gonna be pretty similar to how we simulated a mixed logit choice probability. First, we need to draw random vectors from our population. And we'll denote those beta, as, you know, beta, beta one, beta, beta superscript one, superscript two, all the way up to superscript R. For each of those random vectors, let's calculate the conditional choice probability. So the choice probability, conditional on that being the individual's beta, what would the choice probability be? What's the probability that that individual makes the sequence of choices that we have in mind here, the Y sequence? And once again, I'm kind of expressing everything here as vectors over multiple choice situations, but if you just had one choice situation, then obviously this product would go away. And instead of having kind of a vector of Y's, we just have a single choice, more like what we've been used to thinking about here. But we wanna calculate this, this kind of conditional choice probability. And then we wanna simulate conditional mean coefficients. So the way we simulate these is that they're just the weighted average of our R random vectors where the weights are proportional to those conditional choice probabilities that we calculated in step two. In fact, it's this expression here. The weight is the conditional choice probability of a particular beta draw divided by 
just the sum of all of those, right? So, so in order, if we want our weights to kind of add up to one, we just have to divide through by the sum of all of the of all of these conditional choice probabilities. So we get some random vectors. We calculate conditional choice probabilities for each one of our draws. We can calculate this uh, uh, this weighting. And so this is kind of going to tell us that the uh, the idea here is that the betas that are more likely to generate our, our choices, those are going to be upweighted. And the betas that are unlikely to generate our choices are going to be downweighted. And then we take that weighted average over all of our betas. And that's going to give us the simulated conditional mean coefficient. Once we kind of have the, the infrastructure, kind of coding infrastructure for doing doing this with uh, simulate, like simulating the, the, uh, an estimator, uh, it's actually kind of a very similar process to, to do this for calculating conditional mean coefficient or simulating conditional mean coefficients. We'll, we'll talk about it in class this week though, how to actually do this. Um, but this is the basic set of steps. And I think you, you, you can hopefully see that this is uh, uh, very similar to how we simulated choice probabilities. We've just kind of got some slightly different steps in here. And so the reason that, that thinking about kind of a conditional mean coefficient can be useful is that actually as the number of observed choices are kind of capital T, let's call it, as that increases, so as we have more time periods, more choice situations, whatever it is, as we observe an individual making more and more choices, that conditional mean coefficient for an individual, so the conditional mean for the, dis the, 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 the mean of the conditional distribution of coefficients among the set of people that make choices that look like individual n, the mean of that distribution will actually converge to that individual specific coefficients. So we're never going to know what an actual individual's coefficients are, but as we see them making more and more choices, we can calcu calculate or simulate this conditional mean coefficient for the choices that that person is making. And that statistic is going to converge to that individual's coefficients. Or, or in other words, to say this is that, that this kind of beta sub n bar, this conditional mean coefficient is a consistent estimate for the actual coefficients of that individual. One little tricky thing here is that you must observe and model and estimate and everything many choices for this convergence to even become close. So in the textbook, Ken Train kind of conducts this Monte Carlo simulation exercise. Uh, I think looking at like one, five, 10, all the way up to 50 choices. And even at 50 choices, he finds there's a substantial difference between the uh, conditional mean coefficient that we simulate in the actual true underlying individual specific coefficients, which he knows in this case because he's doing this Monte Carlo simulation. So he's generating and simulating all the data. Um, so take a look at the textbook for more details on that and kind of the full set of results from this simulation. I think it can be really interesting and useful to think through that. Um, of course, we're, we're in a world now where high frequency data, depending on your setting, high frequency data is becoming more and more common. So, you know, it's definitely possible you could find yourself in a situation where you actually observe hundreds of choices being made by the same individual. And maybe you're actually in a case where, where this convergence, you know, you have enough T that this convergence actually starts to be reasonable. Um, uh, it could happen uh, in, in kind of these, the, as we see more and more high frequency data these days. All right, so that was kind of thinking about conditional mean coefficients and, and individual specific coefficients. Uh, another application of conditional distributions is thinking about future choice probabilities. So suppose we observe a lot of past choices that a decision maker has made, then we can actually refine the kinds of choice probabilities that we want to assign to that individual in the future by conditioning on what they've done in the past. And so the basic idea here is that we can use those past choices to define a conditional distribution of coefficients for the decision maker and other decision makers like them, the other decision makers who, are, who would make the same choices in the same choice settings. 
and then use that conditional distribution instead of the unconditional distribution to calculate mixed logit choice probabilities. So I kind of say this mathematically, the notation is getting a little out of hand here, but if we're thinking about the choice probability for decision maker N choosing alternative I in choice situation, capital T plus one. So we've already observed capital T choices. Now we're thinking about the next setting, T plus one. Then the probability that this decision maker chooses alternative I conditional on the data for this future time period conditional on all the choices they've made in the past, conditional on all the data that they faced in the past, and conditional on the distribution, the unconditional distribution of coefficients in the population. So there's a lot of conditioning there, but that choice probability is going to equal a conditional logit choice probability for this t plus one. So this is, I mean, the notation is a little, like I said, getting a little out of hand here because we've got a lot of a, a lot of terms floating around. But this is basically just saying, for this new choice setting in T plus one, what is the conditional logit choice probability? And then let's integrate that not over the unconditional distribution, but over the conditional distribution that we have generated by looking at the past T choices. So kind of conceptually, this is just like the mixed logit choice probability we're used to, but we're going to slip in this H conditional distribution, conditional density, instead of the unconditional density. And once again, this is a mixed logit choice probability. So that means it has no closed form solution and it must be simulated. And so the steps to simulate a kind of future choice probability like this are once again similar to the steps we use to simulate a mixed logit choice probability in some sense because this really is just a mixed logit choice probability we're just kind of mixing over a different density so we draw our r random vectors just like before we're drawing those from the unconditional density for each random vector here each of our beta r's we have to calculate Two things. First, let's calculate the conditional choice probability for all the choices that we have observed for this individual in the past. So we're basically trying to figure out for each of these betas, what's the probability that that beta actually created the choices we've seen this individual make. And then also let's calculate what is the, uh, what is the conditional logit choice probability for this new future choice T plus one that we have in mind. So we need to calculate both of these, both of these kind of choice probabilities, the choice probabilities for our whole sequence of the past and the choice probability for the future. And, and in both of these cases, once again, these are, are the conditional choice probabilities, conditional for each beta that we have drawn. And then let's simulate the future mixed logit choice probabilities as a weighted average of all of these conditional logit choice probabilities, where our weighting is once again proportional to that choice probability for the previous choices. So it gets a little confusing here because we have two different choice probabilities floating around. We're going to weight based on the previous choices. And so we essentially are up weighting the, the coefficients that made it very likely to generate the choices that we've actually observed and downweighting the betas that make it unlikely to, uh, to generate the choices we've actually observed. So those are going into the weighting, but then we will also calculate a conditional logit choice probability for this future choice situation. For the future choice situation that we have in mind, we wanna take each one of those weight it by this weight, these weights that I just described, and then add them all up. And that is going to simulate for us the choice probability that individual N chooses alternative I in choice situation T plus one, conditional on the choices this individual's made in the past, the data this individual has faced in the past, and the density of, uh, the, the unconditional density out there in the population. So all of those things matter. We need to know all of these things if we want to think about uh, kind of simulating these future choice probabilities.
So that's a couple of the things that we can do with conditional uh, conditional distributions of, of coefficients. There, there are certainly others, and, and in your own research, you might run, run into cases where, where there are other things you want to do with these uh, conditional distributions. There, there's a little more about them in the in the Ken Train textbook, and you might even see in other papers that people people do things with them. But that's all that we are going to talk about on conditional distributions of coefficients and individual level coefficients uh, in these videos. And then in class this week, we're going to work through an example where we actually simulate these ourselves in, in R. So, so look forward to that. Uh, or, or, or take a look at the, the, the slides and code if you want to look at it on your own.